This is Andy Porowal for Boxing Social in association with Betfred, and I am joined by Chris Jenkins over Zoom. Chris, commiserations on your defeat this past weekend to Echo Essaman, but first and foremost, kind of, how are you feeling? How are the ribs? First and foremost, congratulations to Echo and the team. Um, the ribs, they're not nice, to be honest with you. Um, but hey, I'll come back. Chris, kind of like... Don't know where to start. Whether to start with the ribs or the, you know, the injury or to the fight itself. So I think I'm just going to go back to the fight. Um, talk me through it. You know, how did you feel in the ring throughout the eight rounds, and especially from the second round onwards after you'd uh, broken those couple of ribs? Um, first round went out and just established myself and my boxing ability. Um, first thing I could, I I know this was. He would step into shots and he's a lot more slower than me. His power was probably more than mine. I had the better boxing IQ when I established that from round one. Went back to the corner and guy said, look, that's exactly what we're doing. Everything off the jab. Don't, don't mix it with him because we were worried about probably getting a cut. Just show how good you can box. And for great round two lengths and then he just caught me with a right hook down to the body and it wasn't it wasn't a flat hook either, it was one of them and it landed by that part of the that part of the knuckle. And as soon as it hit me, I've gone, Oh, that's a nice shot. And as soon as I tried to breathe, I was having sharp pains in the side and I knew for a fact that I'd fractured my ribs. It happened in the second round, Chris. So when you first felt it, what was your reaction? And furthermore, how did you, you know, manage to stay in there for another six rounds? How did you feel trying to navigate through the, the rest of that fight up until you couldn't take any more? Um, when it happened, I went, oh, these fuck. Sorry, my friend. But what, what the hell is that for? Um, I went back to the corner. Obviously, Gary was there straight away. He went, Goes round again. I said, Gah, my ribs are gone. He looked at me and he went, What? I got my ribs are gone. I was struggling to sit down in the corner. Um, and he went, Look, keep doing what you're doing. Do your best to protect it. But you've got to lo- leave our right hand go. Um, I did try, I, I threw it a number of times between round two and when the fight was finished. Um, but every time I was twisting I was just it was just taking my breath away and when I was breathing the only way I can explain it is when you breathe in the ring you deep breathing throughout the full fight to get the oxygen levels in and my my breathing was so shallow like short I just couldn't get the breathing in um I was disappointed the way it ended uh but I just I think I just got a big pair of balls, you know, when I just got, you know, I'm a fighter that won't give up. And I've shown I thought my career never gave up. And I'd have loved to have gone in 12 rounds because up until the time I saw it, but I honestly think I was well in the fight, if not the level, maybe ahead, you know what I mean? Um, But I've actually, I fought like one round between round two and eight. Even though I had, I had the injury and I was basically in the bit of just throwing a jab, I couldn't really throw nothing else. Chris, when Echo was hurt, well, not hurt, but when Echo was you know, continuing to work your body after the second round, um, did you think to yourself, does he know here that I've got an issue? Because like I said to you off camera, I have spoken to him and he said he didn't actually recognise that you oh, yes. that, that injured. <laughs> He said to me after fighting, let the fair play, you've hit, you've hit that very well. You know, um, the plan was to just keep touching back, touching back and counting with the jabs and the one tools, keep it smart. And that was, I was trying to do it um, between round two and eight. And even when I was blocking a shot and my elbows hitting it, it was just excruciating. And the pain, I don't really care about. It was more about 
like the, the taking my breath away, like missing a breath and down the long run, putting a 12 round fight, it's gonna catch up with you and sadly it, it caught up with me, you know. Uh, up until when you couldn't carry on, Chris, uh, how did you feel the fight was going? Because certainly over social media, people had it fairly even, maybe around either way was what I was seeing at least. Yeah, that's what I added. You know, it's probably maybe a wrong claim or wrong to me. It all depends when you liked um, the aggressor coming forward or was it the boxing ability for myself? Um, you know, I thought it was well in the fight, maybe a wrong day either way. But, you know, I'm not taking nothing away from Echo. He's, he, won, he won the fight. He's the champion now. And he, and he deserves the credit. But I hope people can take away from it from my end that I didn't I didn't give up. I didn't go, ah, I'm done. I, I fought on until I literally couldn't fight no more. Chris, with this defeat, I know, you know, it would have been a hard defeat to take regardless. But because of the injury you sustained... Has it in your head made it a little bit easier to kind of deal with because you know effectively he's, he's caught you that early, there was nothing you could do by the time the eighth round come, or is it still as difficult and as, as gutting as what any other defeat would be? My proper getting, you know, I'm not going to lie, I cried a lot. Um, I'm saying things that I shouldn't have said after the fight regarding myself, that I box terrible, this and that, but then if you look at it, I had broken ribs from round two on. And I pushed as best that I could, you know. There's nothing much more I could do. There's people who break a rib and they lay in bed for the next six, eight weeks. I was in there trying to fight somebody for six rounds. Chris, what do you think? Well, not what do you think, but rather what, what have the doctors said to you about your ribs then? What's the next step of you know, your recovery process? Well, on the way home on Sunday, it was... A shit, a shit travel to be honest with you. We've, uh, I think, um, they just sort the road out because I felt every bump in the road with these ribs. Uh, but I went to go and see uh, Dr. Neil Scott, uh, British Boxing Board of Control Doctor. I was going to go down A &E, but having spoken to him, he said you'd be stuck in AE for anything up to three to four hours to go into a room for them to basically assess you and say to you. Oh, you got broken ribs, just go home. They wouldn't do an x-ray. So I've gone to see him now um, Sunday afternoon and he's assessed them. Um, and he's actually probably had a little play on. It's possible they have two, three broken ribs there. And he just said he's looking at 10 weeks uh, and I'll be back in the ring. I'm hoping to be back in the ring late September, early October. I haven't spoken to Frank after the fight. So I'm really pleased that um, Frank Silver will be sticking with me as my promoter. I know we're both signed with Frank. So, you know, hopefully I can get back out in October, get an 8 or 10 on fight and try to get some sort of title. You know, I understand the situation with the, the British title, that there is obviously a run. So I'm not going to be top of the pile now the box for it. There's going to be fighters in front of me. And I'm 32, but. I know no city so I have not been in no wars. Um, I'm always in the gym and, and I feel good. And I think I look good in the ring, and I like I have had really positive feedback of, of people saying it didn't even look as if I've been away for the full 20 months. Chris, that's what I was gonna ask you, kind of. I know it's a it's a while away yet, but have you thought about your return? Have you thought about your path to back towards to the very least, the British title, as you've said, you'd like to kind of get back in there to challenge for. You know what? I, I don't want to. I don't want to be in any fights against you, any men or any prospects. I want to be fighting the lads who are up there. You know, I understand. I might have to have an eight rounder or a ten rounder for against somebody. Then possibly fight for a WBO European or an IBO international, anything like that. Get me back up in the ranking straight away and, you know, hopefully next year then get in, get in line for the British title. But, you know, I just go focus on recovery now and leave Echo enjoy his time as a champion. Chris, 
Um, but I've obviously taken up enough of your time this evening. I want to leave you to rest now and to, to take your recovery in your own time, of course. Um, I appreciate you speaking to me, but I imagine this wasn't easy. And I know you might not have been the most comfortable of positions because we've had a, a few issues trying to set up your camera beforehand. Yeah. Cool. No, it's, it's, it's boxing, you know what I mean? Um, I'm from a site, I just, I do. I, I hope that people still see that I'm a, I'm a worthy fighter, you know what I mean? And, and it just shows that that's so much you meant to me. There, I, I box six songs with busted ribs. And I just wish you went 12, you know? But look, this ain't the end of the road for me. I got a great team around me, Brett, uh, sorry, Gary Brett, and I got uh, Dennis as well. I got Wicked Champion this year, Kalishna, and I got really good sponsors and, and a great manager in Mark Mo Prayer. So I'll most definitely be back. Chris, I look forward to seeing your return to the ring when it does arrive. But like I say, for now, I'm going to leave you to in, enjoy some downtime, hopefully. Um, take your ring sure. in your own stride. Um, Chris, listen, I appreciate it. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. No worries, Thank you so much.